service appointments, accessories. I can do this now independent of any process that's going on in my showroom. Right? You make sense, right? So this is the fundamental change that happened in 2020. We now have a way to merchandise accessories at the car sale process that is independent of the showroom process. And unfortunately, who's this, who am I so in here? How about that I offended already? Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, am I right? Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, if we can merchandise accessories, if we can show a process that happens where the customer is driving that process of choosing the bike rack, choosing the upgraded wheels, choosing to swap out the, you know, the regular boards on the F-150 for chrome, you know, uh, oval sidesteps, and I didn't have to involve my sales department to do it and present it and go through that process, you two guys raise your hand when you sign for that, right? And that's what's happening, right? That's what's happening and it's very exciting. So the digital retailing process is now becoming a stop on the train tracks. It used to be this, hey, you want to sell me? Oh, you don't? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> it, it really was, it's sort of like a, do you want to go get some peanuts on the train track? Yeah. Oh, you don't? Okay, that's great. Oh, you do? Okay. Well, we only have we only have good products, we only have peanuts, that's all we have, right? And it became this very boring after the thought, no one is excited about presenting this great opportunity for people to personalize their vehicles, to add things that they're going to add anyway. They're going home and getting on Amazon and ordering it anyway. Why don't they buy it from you? ...of accessories during the car sale. We've had a couple of launches, Asbury, Car Now, we just announced the dealer on. So they have now uh, launched uh, our visualization within their uh, system. And it's working, right? Now this is a stop along the train track. So for other digital retailers out there, and we have you know, quite a lot of discussions going on, how do you present this back to your dealerships? How do you help your dealerships recognize the opportunity here and build this into their sales process? Well, there's a lot of things that can be done. Featuring certain accessories through that process. Great gateway to everything else. Right? If I demonstrate some of the popular things that go on to my Subaru Outback, then it's a good chance that some of those popular ones will be, yes, I like that. Oh, and what else I would like is, that's why we preload vehicles at the port, right? Part of it is, the OEs don't want to say this, and the dealers just know this, part of it is to shove the accessories down your throat, right? You've got to take the Subaru with $360 of accessories on it. Right? Part of it is moving that product. But part of it is, you know, that's great. What else do you have? But that's the conversation that doesn't happen. This is a way to have that conversation happen. So what's already on the vehicle, what came from the port, and what are the popular items that can be added on to those port items? A lot of dealerships that we work with say, oh, my dealership, Kia dealerships are, are, are pretty good about this. They say, oh, the, the Kia put everything on if it's available. Well, really? Because they have like two items on it. I'm pretty sure they have like 50 items. So you want to bring that again? So, you know, this is the conversations that we have with dealerships. They change their mind and change those pre-prescribed responses to my customer doesn't want accessories. Really? Because there's a $50 billion industry that says they do. And they're going to add it to their vehicle after they drive off the lot. So now this is a way for OEMs, if you're in the, in the audience, the way for OEMs, digital retailing platforms, and dealerships to come together, figure out ways to make this more appropriate and happen. And we'll get to some best practices that come to the dealerships, but really, kind of this slide is how, from a digital retailing perspective, do I help you? And so, from a dealership perspective, what questions are you asking your digital retailer? Hey, can I put my accessories in your system? Yes or no? Hey, how do I price those accessories once they're in your system? Because, God forbid, I want a heat case coming through when we presented it online and it was $200, but there was a fit kit that went with it and it's now really $600. So now we can tell somebody that. Don't want to blow up the car sale, right? So we can't blow up the car sale. So we got to make sure the pricing is right. So dealerships, you should be asking your dealers or retailers, how can you support me in this business? Because I want to get in this business. 